let's pick up the main protease then, and let's think about it for just a second. We actually know the exact three-dimensional structure of the main protease. And here it is right here. It's actually a homodimer, so it has quaternary structure, if you remember those levels of protein structure. So we're going to take it apart. Uh, it's an alpha carbon backbone model. There's a little cavity right here, which represents the enzyme's active site. But normally this is where a sequence of amino acids in a protein would fall right into this active site. And if it's the right specific sequence of amino acids, it'll fit. And then this protease will make a cut. So effectively the sugar or the scissors come in and, and you cut that back. So this is a small molecule analog of a string of amino acids as a peptide part of a protein. And that fits right into the active site here. And here we go, it fits right in there. We show this, the amino acid side chains of the protein which interact with the various functional groups on this uh, substrate analog. And there it is. This is, this is an inhibitor of this main protease. And we will come back to this in the next video when we start talking about what, our, uh, what can we do to protect ourselves. So this is an example of an antiviral small molecule which inactivates one of the proteins that are encoded by this viral gene. All right, well, let's save the details of that for the next video. Uh, let's just mention some of the other proteins that are encoded by this uh, RNA genome. And you already know what some of them are. You already know that there's, uh, in the virus particle itself, there's a membrane protein, this white guy. There's an envelope protein, this, this sort of light blue protein. And these are in the, embedded in the membrane of the, of the virus. And they have something to do with the way the spiral genome is packaged into the, the virion. Uh, you know about the spike protein, of course. Coronavirus encodes its own RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. So that's a polymerase which is able to bind here and copy this RNA into a complementary strand. Now, you think a little deeper about this, it starts to get complicated because when you take this single-stranded RNA and you make an RNA copy of it, you don't have the RNA genome. You have the complement to the RNA genome. <laughs> then you have to figure out how do you copy the copy of the RNA genome to make the RNA genome again. But the point is <clears throat> that RNA-dependent RNA polymerase is again a drug target. We can design, people have designed a small molecule drug, something called remdesivir, and it's in clinical trials right now as a way to stop this virus. Let's, let's inhibit the RNA polymerase, which replicates this RNA. There are other proteins. There's a, there's a very poorly named protein called a non-structural protein number one. And it's a little protein that is thought to interfere with one component of our natural immunity system, something called interferon. So when you're infected by a virus, there's a complex mechanism that triggers this interferon, which is a protein that goes about interfering with viruses in general. So the coronavirus, one of, one of its genes encodes a protein which has evolved a way to suppress that interferon response to a viral infection. A good number of the 29 proteins encoded by the coronavirus genome represent potential drug targets. And there are research labs all around the world, each one of them focusing on a different drug target, a different protein, trying to come up with a small molecule inhibitor, which will then be used as an antiviral to stop the replication of these viruses. Hi there, Mark here, a colleague of Dr. Tim Hermans, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our other coronavirus resources available at www.3dmoleculardesigns.com slash scienceofcoronaviruses.htm.
including a paper modeling activity where you can create your own physical model of a coronavirus. We hope you enjoy, and thanks.